Climate change doesn't have these nice little boundaries. It affects all of us. Warden Hicks, we hear a lot from the federal government and the provincial government about, you know, net zero targets, clean energy, that type of thing. But at the municipal level, what is what is Gray County doing in the environmental space? And and why are things like net zero important to you at the municipal level of government? So thanks for asking the question. You know, this has to be an important issue for all of us. Uh, we can't s simply say this is a, a federal uh, you know, um, project or provincial, you know, climate change doesn't have these nice little boundaries. <laughs> it affects uh, all of us. And so at the local level, at the county level, I should say, Gray County is doing a lot. I, I have to say we've had an excellent uh, climate change uh, task force that's been meeting. Uh, we've engaged uh, consultants uh, to assist us with the technical aspects of what we're trying to do and to, to make sure that we are setting targets that are uh, reasonable, uh, that are achievable, and are going to make a difference. So, you know, everything's being considered, including, you know, for me, exciting things uh, like looking at um, the electrification of our fleet. Uh, and we have quite a number of uh, vehicles out there. And what little impact can that make? And what would happen if every municipality uh, made that little uh, change and, and examine the things that they can do uh, to make a difference? So that for me is exciting. I know that some people will say, oh my gosh, this, you know, this clean energy stuff is just going to you know, cost me more for business and whatnot. But I think those people fail to see the other side of the equation, which is number one, we all get to breathe a little bit easier. <laughs> number two, Gray County is known for its natural assets. And so from an economic point of view, it makes sense for us to protect uh, what is good and what people are coming to Gray County uh, for. But even more exciting is the business opportunities that it presents, uh, the opportunities for innovation, uh, the opportunities for uh, interesting uh, jobs, um, and the opportunity for us to collaborate. I mean, this is an excuse, uh, really, for neighbors to work with each other. So for me to tap my uh, fellow uh, colleagues uh, who are wardens and to say, hey, you know, here's what we're doing. Uh, do you want to join us? Are there some things that we can do uh, together? Uh, or do you want to take a certain aspect and really run with that and we'll focus on this area? That collaboration won't just help us in terms of environmental initiatives, but it'll help us in other areas as well because now we know how to work with each other. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a great point. And that's really that cuts to the essence of what the clean energy frontier program is all about and taking that that high level regional view in terms of bringing Bruce Gray and Huron all together into one collective effort uh, towards this net zero future. And like you talked about this cutting edge uh, technology and innovation that we see in this space. So what advantages do you see uh, towards a net zero economy from working across borders? What do you think that can spur as, as things go forward? Well, the advantages are sort of obvious. <laughs> you know, when we have uh, when, when we focus on clean energy initiatives, we all benefit. So whether it might be health uh, benefits because we're breathing better, uh, what's in the air and what's in our water uh, is a lot more healthy. We all benefit from that. But if you want to be sort of a financial guru and say, you know what, less uh, people in hospital means we're spending less on health care. <laughs> and so maybe there's a little bit more money to go towards other areas because we're not um, attending to a, a sick uh, population. Uh, but as I mentioned before, uh, what's really exciting is the opportunity for us to look at uh, business um, and jobs uh, in areas that don't currently exist. So this chance to really think about innovation. Uh, and, you know, it's been said that, uh, you know, innovation happens at the intersection of collaboration and change. So, you know, either we change or we die. <laughs> and so this innovation is going to be really important. You know, it's about humanity, uh, uh, really. Uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, and I actually would say to those uh, naysayers that there's something in all of this for you, too. Exactly. And, you know, I think it's called the Clean Energy Frontier Program for a, re a reason. A frontier is something that is, you know, we're pushing the edge, the boundaries are changing, and we're trying to be on the edge and be a leader in that space. So when you think of a clean energy frontier here locally in the region, what, what comes to mind? What types of things do you see happening in that kind of frontier landscaping, uh, considering clean energy? 
Uh, so, like I said, um, we are really in the midst of examining uh, what is possible in, in Gray County. We are super focused on making sure that we pr protect our natural assets because that's important to our economy. Uh, we bank on a lot of tourism uh, dollars. Uh, people come here to refresh and to recreate. And if we don't protect that, it's gone. And once it's gone, what do we have, really? Uh, so anything that will uh, support that is open for discussion. Uh, and there have been some terrific ideas uh, that have come forward. Uh, and we know that in setting our targets, we're also trickling that down to the lower tiers to say, we can't just set a county goal and think that we're going to make our targets uh, by working in sort of isolation. So. You know, we've got nine uh, municipalities in the county of Gray, and so Gray County is going to take the lead in sort of um, creating a bit, a bit of a roadmap. Uh, but the how-to and, and the really grassroots uh, initiatives are going to happen at the local level. So we need buy-in from all nine um, uh, lower-tier uh, municipalities if we're going to meet those targets. So I'm excited about that because out of that will come uh, a plethora uh, of initiatives. Um, as some of them are going to be uh, challenging, I, I, I admit, and change is not always uh, easy, you know, get used to a certain way of doing things. Uh, but, you know, if we don't change, what, what then, right? So we have to change. Absolutely. And the, I think that Bruce Gray and Huron are showing tremendous leadership in being that, that catalyst for change and driving that innovation forward. So final question, it's a bit of an obscure one, but what should people be talking about when it comes to clean energy and our region? What's one thing that you know you think people really should be uh, be discussing when it comes to our region and this clean energy advantage and this clean energy future? Well, one of the big things happening in our area, well, two big things. One is uh, what's happening with Bruce Power and the many, many, many businesses that are coming up uh, in support uh, of what's happening at Bruce Power. So that's exciting and and. It's a frontier that allows us to think differently about how do we want our neighborhoods to look? You know, what is it that we dream for in a hundred years? What will uh, our, our environment uh, look like here? And so this is exciting because we get to design that. And uh, if I'm thinking about my great grandchildren, what do I want their future uh, to look like? And, and can I do something now uh, to start the ball rolling and to get that momentum uh, in the right direction. So I think people should be thinking about that. But more immediate, uh, I would say with COVID-19, uh, we're seeing a migration of people. People are thinking differently in terms of, you know, do I, have, I really have to have uh, that $2.5 million home in Brampton? Um, maybe I can buy a $800,000 home, I'm making this up, uh, <laughs> in, in Grey Bruce, and have an excellent uh, lifestyle. I already go there to recreate. Maybe I can see a lifestyle uh, for me permanently in Grey Bruce, and that's already happening. Uh, so we need to look at our infrastructure, uh, you know, things uh, like our internet infrastructure, but also practical things like water and hydro, and how we think about uh, providing uh, those things. We have an opportunity to design that from the ground. Um, uh, from the from the very beginning, uh, in the way that we want and in the way that's going to be meaningful for our kids and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. So for me, that's what I would want the conversation to be about. You know, I uh, I learned at an indigenous uh, session that I attended. I was in a circle, and and uh, these uh, elders were telling me that they make decisions based on generations. Uh, so they're not making decisions for right now. I think that's just a wonderful way of thinking about uh, about issues. How are my actions today going to impact my great grandchildren? That's where I want the conversation to be. Absolutely, that's a fantastic way to to look at things, and I think that's why most people aspire to political office like yourself is to leave a better future for generations to come. And I can't thank you enough for your leadership, Warden Hicks. And I'm looking forward to continuing working with you through the Clean Energy Frontier Program to really, you know, prove to everybody else that we're on the cutting edge of this clean energy future. Thank you.